Hi, welcome to my channel. Thanks so, so much for coming and listening to International Travel Tips. What do you need to know before you travel? And so I'm going to do a little tutorial on the government website. We're going to talk about um, how to look up visa requirements. We're going to talk about passport requirements. And we're going to talk about the STEP program, how to enroll in that STEP program and what it means. And so let's get started and let's find out all the things that will keep you safe and protected as you're planning your international trip. So I'm going to show you this website, travel.state.gov, and this is the website where you can get a lot of information if you're traveling internationally. So you have the passport section here that can give you information about the expiration dates, your application, when you renew your passport, you could do it all here. Um, you go to international travel, and here is information that you can learn about international travel, um, some of the it, documents that you need before you go, any country information. You can click here under country information, and let's type in Peru and see what it says about that. So it's giving you a level three to reconsider travel. And it's not saying don't travel there because I know when I went to Egypt, it was a level three also. So you need to decide whether that's good for you or not, but it gives you information. And here are the alerts. Um, these are information like how you need to have at least six months validity um, on your passport. My suggestion would always be if your passport is going to expire within a year, get it renewed because you don't want to get stuck um, trying to go somewhere and then they won't let you in because your passport doesn't have enough um, days that it's valid. Tourist visa required. Um, you can get, you need to get something at the port of entry. Vaccinations not required. And this is the currency restriction. So you have all the quick facts and there's more information here if you need it. And, uh, let's just, uh, while abroad, it can give you some information while you're there. This is just a really important, website that you can get COVID information, you can get travel advisories, all of that. Um, so just for comparison, if we put in Italy here, it's a level two, just exercise caution due to increased terrorism. But I think anywhere you go, that could be that. And you have some information here again. And it also tells you how long you could stay. Uh, do you need a visa? No. How many pages do you need that are blank on your passport? So all of these things are good information for you to have. Also, in this website, there is um, the Smart Traveler Enrollment Program. And you can also directly go to a link with this. And let's just click on that. So it's step.state.gov. And this is where you would sign up if um, when you go internationally, because this is where you'll get notifications while you're in the country. So it's important to sign up here. And I've done that as well when I went to Greece and Egypt last year. And I'll be doing that when I'm going to Italy and when I'm going to Scotland and Ireland and all this really fun stuff for this year. So I hope that showing this little um, tutorial was helpful to you. So we've talked about visa requirements. We've talked about um, the step program. That's really important. We talked about making sure that your passport has plenty of validity in it. That's not going to expire anytime soon. Then we need to talk about flights. So you need to start looking at your flights. You need to make sure that you're, um, you're looking at your flights and making sure that you can get flights that you want. The important thing to remember also when you're booking your flights is that you need to make sure you have a flight back. You can't just have a one-way flight without a flight back. 
Um, I know this because, um, I mean, I've read about it and I know that that's true, but I chose two different carriers when I went to Egypt and Greece. And so when I was checking in in Istanbul to come back to the United States, they were very concerned about how did I get there? And because I didn't have you know, both ways with that one airline. So I had to show them my ticket into Istanbul. So you need to make sure that you um, have all of that stuff laid out and ready. Another thing you need to do is really pay attention to your phone plan. Because if you go to another country, it can be really expensive. Um, you can look at your carrier, your current carrier, to find out what kind of international plans that they have. And you can see if it's worth it. You can put your phone on airplane mode, turn on your Wi-Fi, and just use um, Wi-Fi. But you can't guarantee Wi-Fi is going to be everywhere that you need. Um, and then there are people that go get a SIM card. So you need to do your research to find out what is the most advantageous. But let me tell you a little bit about SIM cards. You have to buy them in person when you're at the destination. You don't want to buy them at the airport, even though they can be very convenient at the airport, but they'd be very, they're more expensive. So when you get to the country or you get to the city where you're at, you find, um, you find a, um, a store like uh, a Vodafone or Tim or one of those international, um, here's Nico. Sorry. He wants to come up. Ooh. <laughs> Um, one of those international um, phone stores and you need to wait in line and you need to do it there. You need to be over 16. You need to have your ID. It takes time because lots of times you have to wait at those stores. So you need to decide what's what's important. If you're going to be somewhere for a really long time, like you're going to study abroad, you might consider getting a SIM card, but you need to look at that phone plan. For me, I have T-Mobile and it's really great because with T-Mobile, I get free data all over. So I don't have any issues and it's just been, it's been really great. So I love that. Now I've talked about this before, travel and many times, and I think I'll be talking about it many times, it's travel insurance. So if you're going to be going to another country, you need to make sure you're protected and have travel insurance. We know with COVID and all of those things, you just never know what's going to happen. So I suggest that you get travel insurance and make sure you're protected and make sure that that travel insurance covers medical because that way if something should happen and you're in another country that you can make sure that you get home safe and sound. So... You need to make sure that you look at your credit card situation also. Um, you want to make sure that you have a no foreign transaction fee credit card because those transaction fees can just add up. I tend to use my credit card everywhere I go because it keeps track of what I've spent. But there's a lot of places in Europe where you need to have cash. So you also need to make sure that you bring cash of the currency that you're in wherever you're going. Um, so you want to make sure that you have a credit card with no foreign transaction fees. And then you want to make sure, does your bank need to be notified when you go to another country? I know that in, you know, years ago, we'd have to notify our banks, but now with technology, they know it's you and they know when you're leaving. I guess they can track your, you know, all of your track you, I guess, right? I don't know. They'll know your flights. They'll know you're going out of the country. So you don't need to notify them. They have advanced technology now. Another thing that I've done many times, because when I used to go to Italy a lot, I would drive. I would just drive all over the place. Oh my gosh, the stories. The <laughs> I'm driving a manual, right? I have my phone in one hand for the directions because there's no place to put my phone. Oh my gosh, I've had nightmares. And good experiences too. And then you kind of figure out where all the cops are. Oh my gosh. It was fun, but it's stressful. But you need to get an international driver's license just in case. You can get that at 3A and it you know doesn't cost very much. You just need to get a photo and they'll fill out an international driver's license for you. 
And then last but not least, now this is all the things that you need to do before you go anywhere, right? When you're planning your trip, you're, you know, getting all of your situations together is you really, once you get your itinerary done and once you get your flights booked and all of that stuff, you want to make sure you share that itinerary with your family or your friends. Just someone has an itinerary and knows where you are, where you're going in case you need to be contacted just for safety. And of course, you need to make sure that your mail is looked after, that your pets are looked after, all of that stuff, and your plants and um, all of that fun stuff. You know, having a pet certainly does add an expense to your travel, but um, I wouldn't give him up for anything. He's a great little boy. Here he is. Hi. Can you say hi, Nico? <laughs> He's like, <laughs> but anyway, these are all the things that you need to do to plan for your international trip. And then we can go into all the other details on other videos. So keep looking because I'll be having some more international trip tips soon. And I hope that you like this video. Let me know if you like this camera better than my phone. And I would really appreciate it if you liked. And I appreciate you for being here and for watching. So have a really great day and ciao for now. Bye.